This week marks 30 years since Pope John Paul II and a half a million other people celebrated World Youth Day in Denver. The five-day event was covered by thousands of journalists from around the world. You can't see them in that image right there, <laughs> but imagine Trust that, us. okay? It's a beautiful shot of the Mile High City. This all put Denver and Colorado in the world spotlight, arguably the largest event that was ever held in our state. Yeah, there were young Catholics, priests, others from a hundred different nations who came to see and pray with their Pope. The Denver Archdiocese, as well as the city and state, had to figure out how to house, feed, even transport them. And then you have security, extremely tight, since the Pope, of course, a world leader, and President Clinton came to town to meet him as well. The Pope attended many events, culminating with mass at Cherry Creek State Park. Well, our good friend, the retired Nine News anchor Gary Shapiro, is here with us. He covered World Youth Day, and we're talking with you about a very special program that you and photojournalist Manny Satello have put together, looking back at that week, that uh, all the events three decades later. Kind of a crazy event, wasn't it? Yeah. Good to of. see you guys. You covered it, too. Yeah, I know. well, we were all here. I know. <laughs> we were all here back then. Yeah, World Youth Day three decades ago. Arguably the biggest event ever in Colorado, yet a lot of people don't remember it because, you know, they were very small or they weren't here mm -hmm. back then. So we decided to revisit it and uh, kind of show people what a big deal it was. And it was just, it was just a huge deal. I mean, uh, you guys know the TV coverage was just nonstop from early in the morning until late at night. Uh, the Pope was such a world leader, such a charismatic figure and uh, it did, did put Denver on the map, that's for sure. Well, it was a There was huge... like no days off for anybody. <laughs> People were sleeping in all kinds of different places. Right. I think you spent a couple nights here in the building. Um, but did. but how, how, did, how did Denver get chosen again? I mean, I know you went to Rome and did other yeah, things. Yeah, so this was, so this. Uh, Pope John Paul II was the one who started World Youth Day, and he had a couple before Denver. He had one, I believe, in Argentina and uh, one in Spain. And he decided he wanted to do one in the West, which, you know, meant the United States or Canada, probably. And uh, so the Archdiocese of Denver was uh, in pretty good shape with the Pope, and they decided they were going to apply. They put together a terrific proposal. The Pope selected Denver because of that proposal, because he wanted kind of a secular city uh, to make news in, and because he loved the mountains. You know, oh, he, yeah, he, that's he right. He grew up in Poland. He was a skier when he was in high school. He, he played hockey. Uh, and uh, he was just looking forward to visiting the Colorado high country, which, as you know, he did. So you had altitude, a very warm <laughs> week as well, oh. and the tens of thousands on their pilgrimage, because yeah. many called themselves pilgrims, became sick. It became a physical challenge, not only for those, those pilgrims to go see the Pope, but for Denver and Colorado to manage sure. keeping those people healthy. Yeah, we ran into uh, so many stories. And, and you know who was covering them? Kim Christensen and, and Tom Costello was, was <laughs> oh. covering all that. Tom was right in the thick of it. Oh, I still goodness. remember. Yeah, so these people came to Denver. They had to walk from Civic Center Park downtown 13 miles to Cherry Creek Reservoir, Th thousands of them. And it was like a 100-degree day, you know, in August and, and uh, altitude. Uh, they had water donated, but it turned out to be fizzy water. Who knew when you drink fizzy water when you're dehydrated, it's not really it's not good helping. for you. Not helping. So, yeah, and so uh, they were just, they were keeling over like crazy. And, and so that's what the story became, uh, became late in the week. And, yeah. and we revisit some of that in the special too. But there were so many beautiful, unbelievable, um, if you're a person of faith, mm -hmm. you really believe that God was present in those days. There were some special moments along the way. What are your memories? It was really, it was really amazing, wasn't it? I mean, this Pope was a rock star within the Catholic Church. Yes. And he was so charismatic that even non Catholics were like paying moved. attention yeah. to this whole thing. They were moved. Uh, he was such a gentle man. He was such a peaceful man. Uh, and uh, so my memories are of all of that th that week, uh, sleeping on the floor in, in the newsroom <laughs> over here. Uh, also, uh, Mike Landis and I got to uh, go to Rome to do a preview story, and we got to meet Pope John Paul for, you know, just like five minutes. But uh, he was such just such a nice and gentle man. It was, it was really... You know, it's stuck in the brain for sure. World yeah. Youth Day, obviously targeting teens, mm -hmm. people now in their mid 40s. Mm -hmm. You know, that they have reflections as well of 30 years later. We met one who is a priest in Aurora. Really? And he is a priest because he's from Spain and he came to Denver for World Youth Day. He was going to be, he told me, a mathematician by trade. And uh, he was so moved by that pope that he decided to uh, change his. Uh, 
change his job. He became a priest and still is to this day. Now, I imagine a lot of the 500,000 people that were here are not priests today. Right. But uh, they, they were moved, I think, by this message, uh, this message of peace. Of course, later on, we also talk about later on Pope John Paul II's legacy became tarnished a little bit yeah. because, of the, because of the scandal in the Catholic Church. And a lot of people do not think that uh, he handled it correctly. Uh, we talked to the Archbishop of Denver about that. We'll get his views on that. And so we touch a little bit on all of that in this special. Yeah. It's great to see you here. And we're looking forward to the program. But uh, it's always nice to have you back here on the set. You're sitting on the wrong Love. side, though. You I know. Yeah. I've never sat here before. <laughs> it's kind of cool, really. <laughs> but like you it. are so good at these things. Don't oh. stop doing Thank these you, for Kim. us. It's just, it's, I can't wait to watch it. So, viewers, the chance to watch it, Pilgrimage to the Peaks Plus 30, runs Saturday night at 6 o'clock on Channel 9. It'll run again Sunday night at 9.30 on Channel 20. And as always, you'll be able to stream it on the 9 News website, the 9 News YouTube channel, and the 9 News Plus app. Gary, thanks so much. Thank you, guys.